it's time for yet another Swift deep dive. And in this deep dive, we're going to look at variables. So essentially, we've seen that variables are simply a way of giving a name to a piece of data so that we can reference it in our code later on. We did that for our IB outlets as well as our dice number variable, which we created from scratch. And the problem that it solves is really simple. Let's say that if I was to give you a phone number to remember, and I give it to you written down on a piece of paper. Now, if all I had on there was just a number, I know what my drawers look like. And if I have a single piece of paper floating around in there, after not even a day, I'll forget what that number was all about. So how can we make this better? How can we remember what this piece of data is about? We could associate that data with an actual label and give it a name. So we're essentially taking our data and labeling it with a name. Well, this is essentially a variable because if we needed that piece of data in the future, we can simply refer to the label name, which is Angela, and it will be able to retrieve that piece of data. So we have to write a little bit more if we're creating this in code. We have to add a var keyword, which tells the computer that we're creating a new variable. And then we add an equal sign to tell the computer that on the right hand side of the equal sign is the value that we're assigning to that particular variable. So you can essentially view creating variables similar to creating just a box, right? And you whack on a label, which will be able to identify what's inside the box and you put some data inside the box. And now you can store it somewhere on a shelf ready for retrieval. And by looking at that label, you'll know what's contained inside. So if you need the data that's inside, you simply find the right box with the right label. Now, Variables were made to be varied, right? That's the whole point. So we can simply remove the old value and put in a new one if we wanted to. And now that label name Angela is associated with a completely different piece of data. In the resources for this lesson, you'll find a download link for the Swift cheat sheet that we've created for you. And this is just a handy reference guide. A lot of students like to print it out to have it beside them when they're learning. And it's a way for you to be able to quickly refer to the grammar of the Swift programming language. So just as in English, we have our commas and our full stops and they have meaning in the sentence. In Swift and other programming languages, we have certain keywords like the var keyword, which is used for creating variables or the equal sign, which is used for assigning a value to a variable. And this is a handy guide that you can always flip back to when you're completing challenges and when you're trying to write your own code. So the way that we create a variable is we start out with the var keyword, then we give our variable a name and then we assign it a value. That's the theory of it, but let's head into a playground and actually create some code from scratch. So let's say that we had a variable called a and we gave it a number, let's say five. And then let's create another variable called B and let's give it a value of eight. Now, if I decided to print these values, so print A and then print B. Now notice in this case, I don't have those quote marks around the A and B, because if I had that, then it would simply interpret this as a command to simply print the letter or the string A. And that's what you see here. But if I actually want the value of my variable A, then I have to make sure that I'm putting it in as the variable name A and B rather than anything with quotation marks in it. I can make this a little bit fancier by adding some string interpolation. If you remember, the value of A is and then I can add that backslash and put my variable inside some parentheses. And now I get printed the value of A is five. And I can do the same thing for B. The value of B is B. And let's just make sure we're not missing that final quotation mark. And now we get the value of A is five, the value of B is eight. So now that we've covered the theory of Swift variables, 
Let's get a little bit more practice with Swift programming through a coding challenge. Now, as always, the challenges are completely optional, but solving them will help cement the concepts that we've covered and make you a stronger programmer. Also, figuring out and solving these little puzzles is going to be a lot of fun. So I've collated all of the Swift programming challenges on a website called Replit. You'll find the link under the student resources as always. So just click on the interactive programming challenges link. Clicking on the link takes you to the special Replit classroom I've set up for you. And the big advantage of using Replit for these challenges is that you can get your code checked and look at my model solution. Once you've created your account, then head back into our Swift Classroom page. Now here you can browse the assignments, but you won't be able to take them until you click on this button, which says take and learn. Now, once you've done that, our challenges are added to your account as a student classroom. So if you click on the student link, you'll be able to see all the classrooms that you're signed up to. And when you click on it, you'll be able to see all the assignments that you can take. So the assignment that we're going to take today is the variables assignment. For this challenge, I've got the starting code right here, and I've got a detailed description on the right for what you need to do to complete the challenge. So what's the challenge? Without changing these lines or changing these lines, can you swap the values of A and B? so that when these two lines execute, it will say the value of A is eight and the value of B is five. But here's the catch. You can't type a single number. So in your solution, you're not allowed to type a five or an eight. You have to figure out how to switch these two without simply assigning it with a different number. Because the easy way is to say A will now equals eight and B now equals five. And I will get that A is equal to eight and B is equal to five. And I've switched those two values around, but I have used a number. So for this programming challenge, we're gonna be using code to achieve this. And you have all of the tools and knowledge to be able to do this, but you might have to think a little bit outside of the box. So this is a really, really common interview question that you will get as a programmer. And it just tests you a little bit in terms of your lateral thinking and whether if you understand variables well enough. Once you've completed your solution, you can click this run button to run it down here. And it works just like our Swift Playground. Now, once you're happy with the output that you're seeing, then you can go ahead and click on the submit button to submit the assignment. I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video before I show you how to submit the assignment and view the model solution. All right, ready? Did you have a go at the assignment and did you manage to get it right? Let me show you the solution and how to submit your assignment and check your code. Now, the trick to solving this puzzle is to simply create another variable. So let's go ahead and replace this line with our code. I'm going to create another variable called C and I'm going to set C to equal the current value of A. So at this point, C is going to be equal to five. Now, next we can set A equal to B. Now, at this point, A is now equal to eight. And finally, we can set B to equal the value of that's held inside C. And so B now equals five. And within our three steps, if we run our code, you'll see that A is now eight and B is now five. We've managed to switch these two values around in only three lines of code without needing to write any numbers such as A equals eight or B equals five. So now that I'm happy with my solution, I can go ahead and click on submit. And you can see that I've passed all the tests. I've managed to switch the values correctly. Now, if I gotten it wrong, now let's say that my code was not yet working and I wasn't getting the right output. If I try to click submit now, you'll see that I get a error and that the output is not matching what it should be. 
So at this point, you can click on what's wrong and you can see the problem, which is that the teacher expected A to equal eight, B to equal five, but your output at the moment has a difference. So then we can click keep trying and make sure we've typed the code that will pass all our tests. We've already checked it using our run button and we now click submit our test or pass and we can finally click on submit. At this point, we can actually click on a link that shows up to see the model solution that we provided for you. So we can go ahead and click OK and it will show us the model solution right here. So you can only see the model solution after you submit your assignment and you can click on the back to submission button to see your own code. So this is how Replit works and it allows us to show you the model solution as well as test the code that you've got and for you to complete these challenges and improve your programming skills. I'll see you on the next lesson where we'll learn more about Swift arrays.